my Willy Wanderers and welcome to Sunday's video. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention at the end of uh, the last video was to make sure you take your tension, not your tension, make sure you take your drive band off when you finish spinning because it can stretch. So if you keep it like, um, obviously with my lendrum I have it quite high, so all the time that is like that, obviously that's under tension and it can stretch your drive bands. So, just a little tip. Take them off at the end of spinning. Okay, what are we gonna cover this week? Well, I thought we'd have a look at some different wool. I wanted to show you, well, first of all, I was very intrigued by this stuff. This is from Tiger, which is like a, cheapy shop that we have in this country which sells all different things from a um, I think it comes over from Sweden or somewhere like that anyway this is meant to be for knitting and I found it in the charity shop and it's polyester and acrylic so it's not even wool <laughs> I was really um, sorry just completely doing that wrong because I'm talking um, I was really intrigued by it, so I thought I'd just do it on camera. Now, if it's rubbish, then obviously I'll edit it out. <laughs> you won't even see me doing it. But I was just intrigued because, like, it's a massive amount of, um, I mean, I'm not going to call it yarn because obviously it isn't, but of fleecy type of fibre. So um, I thought I'd see what it spun up like. It was £2.50 for 250 grams. So I thought, well, I'm going to give that a go. <laughs> As I said, I'm unsure. Sorry, I'm just taking my shoes off. I don't like to spin in my shoes. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Well, I am a bit odd, but yes, I don't like to spin in my shoes. I like to be at one with my spinning wheel. Okay. Ooh. I'm just making that noise. It's because I don't want my rabbit to get my other drive band. I've got two drive bands because I've got the bigger mother of all, the big fly wheel and a big um, bobbin to go with it so for art yarn. Right, so I'm gonna start the wheel off, as you can see. So I can feel that pulling in. I'm just gonna start drafting away with this. Oh, oh certainly drafts. Let's just bring you in. So you can see what I'm doing. Well, isn't that weird? Now probably people are just screaming at me saying, well, of course you can do that. I've never done it before. So that's why I thought I'd do it on here. Yeah, so it definitely resembles like a carded wool because it's quite fluffy. It doesn't feel like wool, admittedly. So uh, anyway. Let's see if it's, it's like back on itself a little bit. There you are. Oh, it's it's not bad. So you can certainly spin it if you find this stuff in charity shops or it's not going to be as wool as it's not going to be as warm as wool and I don't know why you would spin it I was going to use it for felting actually let's do it a bit thicker see what that comes out right so obviously when we're doing it thicker we're just pulling out more if we want to thin down we're literally going to pull out less. At the minute, I've got it on quite a large whirl. Let's try and so this now will start spinning it a bit faster. So this would be harder to. You'd have to go faster if you wanted to make it a thicker yarn. So basically, the bigger the whirl, because it's quite fluffy, it doesn't feel like wool. 
admittedly. So uh, anyway, let's see if it's, it's right back on itself a little bit. There you are. Oh, it's, it's not bad. So I'd have to do a bit more. Anyway, so you can certainly spin it if you find this stuff in charity shops or it's not going to be as wool as it's not going to be as warm as wool and I don't know why you would spin it. I was going to use it for um, I was going to use it for felting actually. Let's do it a bit thicker, see what that comes out right. So obviously when we're doing it thicker, we're just pulling out more. If we want to thin down, we're literally going to pull out less. At the minute, I've got it on... Quite a large whirl. Let's try and... So this now will start spinning it a bit faster. So this would be harder to, you'd have to go faster if you wanted to make it a thicker yarn. So basically the bigger the whirl, the thicker your yarn's gonna be. The smaller the whirl, because I've also got, with my Lendrum, I got this one as well, which takes you right down to a small whirl. And so if you were doing something like silk or I've got Angora because obviously I've got an Angora rabbit, you would probably go down to something smaller like that. Um, but anyway, okay, I thought I'd just see what that felt like with the um, with this polyester stroke acrylic. But yeah, I'm going to use it for felting. I thought it was a nice colour to be able to do for that. So I certainly wouldn't spin with it. But I just wanted to see if you could. Right, okay. Now I'm going to go on to some definite carded wool. This is real wool. Um, it's Polworth, so it's really nice and smooth. It's been hand dyed by I've Forgotten because I've had it quite a while. And I've split it up so then it makes it a little bit more manageable. I wanted to show you different types of yarn and how they spin up so when we've got something which is carded we're trying to make a woolen mix so if we were doing worsted with roving then we would be basically keeping the wool around here and and basically feeding it in from this angle going into the going into your um spinning machine spinning wheel spinning machine spinning wheel but when we're doing carded wool we don't want that really neat finish not all of the fibers need to go in the right direction because why that's not how it's been prepared so what we do when we're um, working with carded wools we make a woolen mix uh, we make a woolen wool and we do the long draw method with this now obviously short draw I'm working here I can even come up to here but still it's very managed if you like um, let me just let me just put this on again 
so you can see. Yeah, it's very managed. Think of it that way. And we're saying to the fibre, well, we know you've been prepared like that. So I'm going to make sure with this hand, can you see with my thumb, I'm going to make sure that all of that is going in the right direction. So I'm working quite close. I mean, I can come up here and do it like this and then come in and come out four and then back in one, two, three, four. I mean, that's not my treadling, but that's me just counting and going in. So we can keep around this distance with roving and for a worsted weight wool. So all of the roving is going in one direction. When we've got something carded, we want to do a different thing. Now, I'm not suggesting if you're a new spinner, you want to necessarily go straight on to long draw because you don't need to do that yet. I mean, you can do, don't get me wrong. And I did this for quite a while actually, when I first started spinning. Obviously I'm getting that attached. Okay, let's just bring you in so I can show you again. Right, so obviously, let me just bring you in again. Right, so we've got a nice woolly bit there. We've got a nice woolly bit here. Do you remember? Both these two bits are gonna to go together. I'm putting the top bit onto the bottom bit. I'm spinning, it's taken it. We can see that. Then I'm going to pull. And I'm going to pull, so I'm drafting with my right. So here I am doing a carded wool, but I'm doing short draw, okay? So it can be done. So the fibers aren't gonna be all in alignment like a roving would but it's certainly more managed than if we were doing long draw. So it is still fuzzy. You can see there are bits of wool sticking out, which is nice. Don't know how close I can get that so you can see. Okay. And if I was doing a roving, let me just get one of my this is another one I was going to look at with you later. Uh, this is this is roving. Let me just get my hand behind it. So there's the roving, and so everything is in alignment. So with the carded wall, let's just show you again. It's not really, really different, but it is a bit more woolen, as you can see. You can see a bit more wool coming out of different ways, which is what you want with woolen. Right, I'm going to have to push the camera back because I want to show you long draw. Okay, hopefully you can see me a bit better now. Right, let's unwind that. So when I'm doing long draw, it's literally, as I say, just get back to where we were. So I'm here. I have my hand, which I'm going to be drafting with. My I use my right hand. My left hand is going to be doing a bit less. So I'll show you. Okay. So I can feel the wall pulling in. Okay. I can feel that. Can you see? Yep. So I've got the tension. And then I'm going to start bringing it back. I'm doing my feet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. That's what I'm doing with my feet. And I get out and then I bring it in. And when you start, I would be doing more of this stuff, which is just drafting it out as you go. Okay, when you become more experienced with it, you are literally doing it from here. And you're just drafting it from here. But that takes some time and actually, yeah, 
just takes a bit of patience to get to there because it does snap off, especially if you're not, see what, what can happen is you're so busy concentrating, drafting it out that you forget to do your legs. Okay, which means there's not enough twist in it, which means it will snap. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what my feet are doing. Now I can feel the twist going in each bit of yarn, okay? And I'm happy with that twist. I can see quite visibly here the twist is going in, okay? And then I'm coming out here and then I'm going in. And what this gives you is a woolen yarn. So we're kind of allowing the twist to go into the wool and we're not aligning it. So when we're doing worsted wool and we're using um, roving, we're kind of saying to the wall, well, I want you to all go in the same direction and I want you to, that's what we're saying to the wall. Well, I don't know if you talk to your wall, I do. <laughs> I'm saying wool, this is what I want you to do. Now, let's bring this out a little bit. Oh, sorry, I should have loosened the tension off. Hang on a minute. I didn't like that. Yeah, if you're going to pull the wool out, sometimes you just need to loosen the tension a bit. If the wool's not taking in, it's because your tension's not right. If the wool's whipping in like a hurricane, <laughs> you, know, you know that the wool is actually, the tension is too high. You need to lower the tension. The other thing with... Uh, long tail spinning is you do not get that wool on the on the uh, bobbin a lot quicker it's a much quicker way to spin uh, when you're doing worsted spinning with short draw yeah takes a lot longer I'll take that to there yeah so spinning like this actually helps you to spin quicker. Right, okay, so let's get the twist on. So you know my favorite expen expression, lumpy bumpy. It is a kind of bit more lumpy bumpy. You're obviously putting more yarn. You see that like, I'm waiting for that twist to come out and then I can draft on it. You see? Usually we're here, aren't we? Drafting, drafting, drafting. Whereas because I can feel the twist has got the wool, I'm thinking, right, I can pull on that now so that I'm able to pull and draft with my right hand. See, now look. This here is wanting to go because it's saying, actually, you've, yeah, see, I could see that. You've pulled out a bit too much there. So you just need to be careful with how you're pulling out. Right, here we go again. Let's attach them both. Let's get the twist on to both of them. Right, okay, it's taking it on. I can feel it. Yeah, that's taking that into this bit now. Right, it's taking it on, I can feel it. So, I can feel it doesn't want to pull. If you can feel it doesn't want to pull, you can just, ah, uh, there we go. Just unwind it a bit. So what I'm saying is don't pull it too thin. Because if you pull it too thin, it's going to want to snap. So I'm kind of, with this hand, I'm kind of doing a bit of this and pulling it. And this hand, I'm kind of guiding it and pulling it that way as well. So this bit here, 
isn't very spun. So when it gets to there, you might just hold it a little bit before it goes in. Right, okay. Here we go. You can feel it holding it, so I'm pulling it. So I'm actually holding it, that would be, and stopping the twist coming up. And I'm saying to this bit, okay, let's keep going. Well, I can feel that that's going to, if I go any further, that's not going to like it. You can see what the wall wants to do. So I'm thinking, right, okay, that's fine. It's coming out, it's coming out. Keep coming. Come on, you can do it. Don't forget to keep doing your feet. If you forget to do your feet, I'll show you what happens. Right, so I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I love this wall though, it's nice. Really woolen, lovely. Right, okay, here we go then. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So that's where I am, and then I'm gonna slow right down. So there I am, slowed right down, and I'm still trying to do this. But what's not going into the wall? We haven't got much twist. That one, yeah, <laughs> there you are. Yeah, so because I didn't have much twist in it, as you can see, not much twist there at all. It just pulls apart. Yeah. So whatever you're doing, don't forget to keep treadling. And I think that's when I started doing long draw. That was the bit that I found the hardest was thinking, oh, you know, the whole patting your head, rubbing the tummy, tummy sort of thing that, that we do. And uh, I, you know, because someone's talking to me saying, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Yeah, so. It's uh, yeah, it's not forgetting your feet. Now, remember when we had our last video, well, the first part one, shall I say, of the videos, if you have had a look at part one and part two. You know, I was kind of trying to get you all into a rhythm of spinning. Okay, we're gonna join these two together. Right, so I've got the pull. I can feel, I can feel there that it's secure. She says, and pulls it too much. Yeah, I nearly did just pull that apart then. I'm gonna let that go through. Right, I can feel that it's there. So now I can now draft on it. I can feel the twist going into it, so I'll draft again. I can feel the twist going into it, so I'm going to draft again. Okay, so it's a pinch and a pull but I've got that much yarn going to go through and I'm going to go again. I can feel it. I'm thinking, yep, that's got that. And then I'm going to start drafting it backwards. So that bit there, you could say, well, that's a bit fat. So just stop your wheel. Obviously you've got hold of the pinch and then I can just draft it out a bit more because we don't want to waste our wool. Let's be honest. So if there is a bit, right, say I let that bit go through, okay? So this bit here is a bit fatter. So I'm thinking, oh goodness, that's a bit fat. So I've stopped my wheel. I've got hold of, I'm still pinching the wool here, okay? I'm just gonna draft that out a bit more. Gently, admittedly. And I've got a bit there, which is which may be able to draft a bit more, yeah. And that bit I could draft a bit more. Okay, and then I'm gonna start putting the twist in. And there you are. That will just go in. Let's go again. So I've got the twist, I can feel the twist. I can feel the twist, okay? I can feel it pulling me. Right, so I'm saying, right, I'm gonna go against that pull with drafting. I'm gonna use the pull to be able to draft. I've got some more VM. I'll just get that off. Ooh, 
I'll go that way. So I'm letting that, and I'll come to the end of this bit now. So I'm going to leave it with a nice fluffy bit to be able to join the other bit of wool on. Yeah, because I've been teaching you, I haven't really been checking what my bobbin's doing, so it looks a bit of a mess at the minute. Right, let's go up a bit more. Ooh, attention things come up. So if you do want more twist to go into your yarn, because this is very, very soft, I can bring it down to a different whirl, which means it's going to twist it faster, or I can tighten my tension. So I can do one of two things, or I can do both. Let's see how that affects it. Right, so I've put it onto a different whirl. So it's going to, oh, yeah, you can feel it straight away. It just wants to yank out your hand. So I'm going to undo the tension a little bit and let the whirl take it and see what that's going to dictate to me. What's it telling me? What does it want to do? Right, oh my goodness, well look, it's just, yeah, it's just wanting to absolutely grab the wall quickly. Yeah. So for me, not too keen on that. It's it's pulling it in. Yeah, it's pulling it in too fast, and then I'm not actually grabbing hold of it. So I've gone down to the different whirl. So I'm gonna undo the tension a bit more, and let's see what that does. Right, off we go again. Ah, yeah. Look, it's not doing anything now. You see? So I'm going to just tighten it, so you can see a bit more, I'm going to tighten it a bit more. And this is like an eighth of an inch at a time, if you like. Get the two bits together. Right, okay, I can feel it. Yeah, I'm not enjoying this well. I'm not enjoying I'm not enjoying that now. <laughs> I can feel it. It just doesn't feel so it's not putting it's not putting enough twist in, but it is over spinning other bits. So it's yeah, didn't feel very nice. So I'm gonna go back up to the other whirl. Let's go back up one more. Let's go up to the top now I have. I'll let you know what the ratios of this on the screen when I edit the video. Right, so I've gone up to the top now. So I can feel it pulling in. I'm just going to tighten the tension a bit. And this is what I really want you doing with your spinning wheels. Get different wool and see how you get on with it. Because really what you want to do is understand. Yeah, that's... Okay, not too bad. It's not too bad, but it's not putting a lot of twist in that. So I'm going to up the tension. That was about a quarter of an inch, that one. Oh yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it pulling now. Thank you. Yeah, it's like come back to work, come back to work for me now again. Yeah, so you can see straight away. <laughs> Shit. So I've upped the tension in that. So I've put it on the big whirl, I've upped the tension. Yeah, 
I don't want it to join onto that bit because that's never ever going to be smooth because it had that knobbly bit in it. Right. Going to let it grab hold of the wall like it's done. Okay, I can feel it pulling. Thank you. And I'm going to get the glass. So, shit. Go on with this end. On that one, don't talk it around because I'm not going to put the shit. Okay, so I've put it on the big whirl now. I've put the tension up, just bringing this to the end. I don't like that bit. It's not very fluffy. Let's make another fluffy bit. Remember we said we've got to make a fluffy bit for it to join on to. As you get more experienced, you don't have to pay so much attention to that because you end up just kind of doing it naturally. But when you're first beginning, you certainly want two fluffy bits onto each other. Right, just pulling it. I can feel it. I can feel the tension, she says. No, see, that didn't like that very much. I've never, um, I don't know if this is Polworth. I thought it was, but it's a very odd mix. It's not quite spinning as I thought it was going to. Right, let's go again. No, I don't like this at all. That's trying to pull it off me and it's not very comfortable to do a long draw with. Yeah, so as you can see, I've messed around with the whirls. I don't like that one. So I'm going to put it back where I had it, which is where I thought it should be. I just wanted to show you that changing the whirls, so I've got three whirls on this one, really makes a difference, as well as moving your tension. All right, see what this feels like. Obviously, have been messing around with the tension. Oh, that feels much nicer. Yeah, so long draw can certainly put a lot of wool on the bobbin quickly, which is great when you're trying to do something a bit a bigger project, if you like. So a woolen wool, if you're doing it long draw, will certainly spin quicker if you're doing long draw. But you have got the woolly texture. But I like that. You know, that's part of uh, that's part of having cheap wool. I mean, if it looks too, um, what should I say, too manufactured, then you might as well just go and buy a knitted sweater from the shop, hadn't you? Yeah, that feels so much better. Oh, I definitely feel like Goldilocks this time. Yeah. Oh, now look, yes, that's, so that one's a big one. So I'm thinking, oops. Right, so I've got hold of the twist here. Got hold of the twist here. Don't let go of the twist. And just draft it out. You see? Just drafting that out. Now, if that was highly twisted on the end, and you just thought, oh my goodness, right, I'm just going to do a bit. So I'm going to do a fat bit. 
and then I'm going to highly twist that bit. Right, so I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't pull that apart because I've highly twisted that bit and that bit's twisted. So we just go to here because I want it to stop there and I just unwind it. I unwind the twist, you can see I've unwound that now. Go back to the bit I want to draft out again and draft it. Yeah, keep hold of it. Start the washing machine, I was gonna say then. <laughs> Start the spinning wheel. Goodness me. Menopause has got a lot to answer for. Right, and then start drafting again. Don't ever be frightened to untwist something. So say I, say I let all that through, and then I've got this bit. So that's then, can you see? That's really twisted and fat. I don't like that. I don't want that to go through because that's not what I want with my wall. So I'm going to come to this bit, which is the twist. The bit I want to stop. So the twist is obviously highly spun there, low spun, but still spun and highly spun there. So I want to unravel this bit. So I'm going to go back to here where there is higher twist and just get hold of it and unravel it. I've unraveled it. Okay. Now I'm just going to draft again and start my spinning wheel. I'm just going to draft it out. The biggest bit of advice I can give you with any spinning that you're going to do is don't stress out. You know, if it's not working, don't have a cup of tea. If you come back and you can't work out what the problem is, then try and think about tension try and think about your whirl, what's going on with your treadling, you know. I would highly recommend though, if, you're, if you've just started, that you just stick with short draw, even if it's carded at the minute, okay. Just get used to drafting and treadling. There are enough things to be thinking about. It's not until you've got a bit more experience that you can go in to do the long draw, because I've got to be honest, it's not easy, and if you haven't got enough twist within the wall, it will break easily, okay? And then it becomes, it feels like you've gone backwards again. So if you've only just started and you're getting it right, stick with that for a few for a few weeks if you're doing it, you know, regularly and then move on to long draw rather than, um, rather than going straight over because it will feel like you're starting again, okay? Um, we're going to have a look at another bit of wall now as I showed you briefly. This was a... I just love this colour, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? But I'm making this into a single. So we're gonna do this together, not all today. But what I am going to do is do some more spinning with it. And just to show you, so this is a roving, which is in here, in this bag, and it's a tweed. And because it's got little bits of little noils in it, it does make it slightly harder to spin. So I've spun it bigger. So uh, it's like a kind of a DK weight, if you like. And then I'm going to make it into a single rather than doubling it up to be like a chunky wall. I don't want it to be a chunky wall. Um, but I really like the, um, so you can see it's not got huge, huge amounts of twist in it, which obviously when you're doing a single, you don't want loads and loads of twist in it because it will just spin up on itself and you'll never be able to knit with it and the bias on it while you're knitting will be, it will make your wool go up into a kind of, well, it just completely twists the wool up. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like I'm doing Vogue or a robot kind of dance. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, so um, I'm just going to show you doing a little bit of this, which is just a different kind of wool again, because that's, that's what you've got to have in mind when you're doing all these projects. I mean, my whole bottom of my house is covered with different kinds of wool. I mean, literally not furnished like that, you understand. But yeah, I mean, there's just different types of wool everywhere. And so every single wool needs a different kind of preparation, as we've seen. So we've got roving and, and the last piece was carded. Um, and out of the preparation comes then a different way of spinning the wool, whether it will be worsted or woolen. So um, this is going to be worsted, obviously, because it's out of a roving. So I'm just going to switch you off while I change my bobbin 
and change the camera angle. Okay, when you come to a bobbin which you haven't used for a while, um, it's really easy to put the bobbin on the wrong way. I talk from experience with this. <laughs> so you load the bobbin onto the spinning wheel and you think, what's going on there? Because it's all getting a bit tangled up and it starts going the wrong way, obviously, because your bobbin is, you've got it round the other way. So I just want to say to you, the wall needs to come over the top of the bobbin. Okay, not underneath the bobbin. If it goes underneath the bobbin and you're putting it on to spin again, it's going to start unraveling. It will catch and then start raveling on top. But when you come to then put it onto uh, a niddy noddy or onto a skein winder or anything like that, you'll come a bit unstuck. Okay, so my, my wool is going over the top of the bobbin and coming out on top. I then attach the bobbin, put the tension band on, like that. and then obviously I attach it on with my uh, whatever that's called. As I said, menopause has got a lot to answer for because it takes your words away. I don't know why, I don't know why it decides to take your words away, but it does. It feels like you're pregnant again. If you've ever been pregnant, you might know that, but menopause certainly does this. Right, okay, so as you can see, the wool is gonna go round now, yeah, and take on, okay? So just a top tip, as I say. I talk from experience, right. Yeah, it's nice. This is from World of Wool. It's called Myrrh. But I really liked it. We used to have a bright orange wool in our old house. I loved it. Not everybody thought the same, but I liked it. Anyway, look. So it's got gorgeous. It's got all these different oranges and reds, and it's got these lovely noils in it, which then makes it... It makes it uh, like a tweed effect wool, which I really, really like. So I'm just going to pre-draft it a little bit. I don't always do this, but as I said, this one has been a little bit more difficult to um, spin because of the noils in it. You can't get it as... Neat would be the wrong word. You can't... I couldn't get it as thin. Now, I'm not saying you can't get it as thin, but for me, I couldn't get it as thin, and I just thought, actually, I really like it like this. So I'm going to make a single out of it. And I thought that quite early on. Okay, there you are. Zoomed in a bit more. Right, so I've left myself a fluffy bit as we talk about. So I'm going to get the next fluffy bit. Right. Oh, come on, you. And I'll be adjusting the tension as I go. Because obviously I haven't done this one for a while. And I want to make sure that I'm letting in, yeah, so I'm happy with that whirl. I can feel it's taken on nicely. I can feel that. Let me just come out slightly so you can just see my hand. There you are. Yeah, it's taken on nicely. I like that. Is it pulling on too fast? No, it feels all right at the minute. It's not want to rip my hand off, so that's good. But see, when you come to the noil bit, so I've got one there. Yep. So, yeah, it's just, I found, slightly harder to make really, really thin because obviously they're a little bit thicker. So for me, I'm spinning it as a single so that I can keep those noils in and not have to really, really twist them out. Because if I went like this and made that really, really thin there, so I was doing that a different weight wool, the noils just loses its kind of, I don't know, it's got like a really nice texture to it with it being fat. I think so anyway. Yeah, so I've 
decided to just spin, spin it as a single. Now because of that, I'm obviously not wanting to put a huge amount of twist in it. So I'm letting it go on to the bobbin quite quickly. So if I pull this out, Hmm. A bit more twist in there than I want really. Look at these other bits. Yeah. I need to be putting a bit less twist in that. So you can see, can't you, that this is the bit that I've just attached it onto, which has got less twist. It's not twisting up on itself. So I need to I'm gonna take it up to the different whirl, to the bigger whirl going to undo the tension a bit and when you come back to a project you've got to think right where was I when I finished I'm going to kind of take some of this twist out of here via yeah you get into lots of messes like this when you're spinning <laughs> well I do because you want to carry on like you've been doing it see I, I prefer that twist in it but obviously that's because it's been... So sometimes you can let it go out. It's kind of felted together a bit there. Or sometimes you just do this, donk, and then you get this bit, donk. That's the over-twisted bit. Don't really want that. Let's see if I can get this going. Yeah, that was a bit going to go down there. So I've taken the twist down a bit. So I've put it on the bigger whirl here, the end whirl, and I've taken the tension down a bit because I don't want massive sort of twist in it because this is going to be a single. So obviously we still want it to take on. So all this stuff's been through. All right, let's see what this is doing. Have a look. Ah, that's better. Can you see that? Well, it has gone a little bit. Oops. That was the end bit that I was still doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take this bit off again. So that was the end bit of the stuff that we were just mucking around with. I want to get it right. I don't want to. Let's just have a look, see what's going on with this. Right. Okay. Got to try and you've got to try and find where you started. <laughs> and what what I was going to do was pull it back, but actually, there is quite a lot of twist in it. And in the scheme of things, I'm just going to let that bit go for a minute. In the scheme of things, I'm not wasting a lot of wool. But I'd be wasting a lot of time to try and get that twist out if I'd let it go through as, and use it as singles. And then I had too much twist in part of it. That would not be a good mix. Right, okay, here we go then. Right, so I've joined on, I can feel it. And I'm just letting it go on quite quickly. Let's just see what that looks like. That's better. Yeah. So we can see that's not going up into little. Let's just see if I can zoom you in a bit. Yeah, so we've got little. It's not whipping it straight up. Just going to be very mindful of how much twist I'm putting into it. And actually, all of my, um, yeah, so you can see there is twist in it, yeah, but there's not loads of twist in it, okay, because we're going to fill it, uh, it's a, you go through different techniques to make the wool fuller, or fill the wool, fill the wool, F-U-L-L, -L, which will then means that it won't break.
because if I put loads and loads of twist in this you wouldn't be able to well it would take you ages to try and balance the yarn that's what we've got to do afterwards so everything's a lot more um my hands are a lot less oh, let me just come out again my hands are a, are not as holding on to the wool for dear life to say don't go through no we don't want it held on but like that but it certainly is a lot more relaxed i'm letting the wall go on a lot quicker than i would usually do i've left that look so that whole noil has gone in there you in so you can have a look yeah so that's gone in nicely but look it's not mega mega twisting up on itself right here we go so i don't want that to go in like that that's because i was just looking at the camera so i've just kept hold of the twist I think what I'm trying to say is I want character within the wall because it's got this these noils in it. I want to keep that sense of you know someone's put them in there. So let's let's show that off as part of the wool. I don't want them to be overly processed so it's spun within an inch of its life because you're not going to get to see the beauty of the noils, which is you know you can really see here if I just zoom you into the onto the bobbin you can see all these different noils on it so you've got it's a nice mix a nice tweedy wool I like it yeah so hopefully even though I made some mistakes there hopefully I've shown you that's fine I just took it off I'm not going to beat myself up and I'm not going to take it off the camera and over edit it to not show you that you know when you pick up a yarn which you haven't done for ages because it's probably about a lot about a year since I touched that wool um I had to get it the same as what I'd done it in the first place and for me to do that I needed to favorite word coming test and adjust and obviously I spun a bit and it had gone in but it was really wound up then, as you can see, you would go like that and it was doing, but look at that, that's much, much softer. The curl is much softer. And um, so I just decided I'm gonna take that bit off. It's probably only a couple of meters to be honest. So uh, six, six foot or so. And you know, I just think, well, that's fine. I'd rather do that there than come to the really difficult stage when you're trying to skein it and sort it out that way. You know, I'd much rather have sorted it out at this stage rather than that, that stage. So it is thicker than it usually is in how I spin. So I'm obviously grabbing more wool than I usually do. But because I'm doing a single and I'm not going to apply it with something else, it's just going to be that. You know, and once I've fooled the wool, which means it slightly felt it on itself, which means it's... It means it stays together like that. Otherwise it could break apart while you're knitting it. So the processing after this is gonna be more than you would usually do with applied yarn. But we will go through all of that together. Not today's, not today's video. But yeah, I wanna go through that with you so you can see how to make a balanced singles yarn. So hopefully that's explained and shown you different wool preparations, different ways of spinning the wool, different ways of planning the wool. What am I going to do with that wool? It wasn't really until I started spinning this that I thought, actually, 
I don't want to ply it because I realised it wasn't spinning like I usually spin. But actually, I felt OK with that. And then deciding, right, what am I going to do with it? So I was going to, right, I'm making it into a single, so I need to spin it differently. Yeah, so we've learned a few things today, haven't we, together? Hopefully the biggest one is don't panic, you know. If it's not right, there's a reason for it, you know. You've got to think about the wall perforation. You've got to think about how the spinning wheel's set up. You've got to think about how you're treadling. You know, go through all of those things. Run through everything and think, right, what am I doing? What what could be wrong? If the wall is zipping in like that, your tension is too high, okay? If it's not pulling on, your tension's too low. Don't forget you've got whirls. Now, some some... Spinning wheels have only got two, some have got one, some have got three, okay? Decide, am I on the right wheel? Is that is that the right um, ratio for what, what I'm treadling and et cetera, et cetera? So think about that as well. Um, also, you know, is your tension, ba is your drive band on correctly? Um, this will, this... Um, my spinning wheel doesn't need to be oiled, but for example, my traditional and my Kiwi both needed oiling. So all of the metal parts within the um, within the wheel had to be um, oiled uh, when I used it. Not every single time, but they certainly need to be oiled. So I can show that on the next video, actually, just to show you how you do that, because that's really important, because if they're not oil oiled, then they're not going to run smoothly. OK, so, yeah, there are a num number of things that can cause issues. Um, but hopefully, you know, once you've been through everything, you can think, oh, right, it was that or it was this. Or do you know what? It's just not working today. <laughs> There's also that that happens. But also the wall preparation is huge, you know, especially if you've got carded wall. Now, that wall I was doing earlier with long jaw uh, yeah that was a bit odd to use actually it was very um it, it was really really fluffy um so it was like a a really soft wool which had been carded and so it broke easily so like if you've got um you know something a bit harsher like corridor or you know something with a bit more um They've got more barbs on them, so it sticks together a bit more. That's easier to um, that's easier to spin. But that that one I just did then was uh, very very fine. So a little bit harder carded to spin as a long draw. But yeah, we did it. I'm not saying it was perfect, but it was done. So hopefully that's helped somebody out there um, with the preparations we've done today. Don't be hard on yourself. Keep testing and adjusting. Keep trying. It can be infuriating at the start, okay? But don't give up, you know? Sometimes we just have one of those days, so there's also that in it as well. So please don't give up. Just keep um, just keep treadling. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Yeah, just keep treadling. And if there are any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them for you to help you on your way. I really appreciate the two comments I've got um, about my spinning videos. It's really spurred me on to think that people out there want to see my spinning too, as well as the other things that I do. So thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate that. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you all next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me my, and my channel to grow. And uh, I really appreciate you all watching. Take care now. Bye.